Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to bring to you the future. Over 300 of the world's top scientists that I've interviewed for BBC television, the Discovery Channel, that question that I ask them is, is there intelligent life on the earth? And I see all these intelligent people, these movers and shakers, believing in a better society created by science and technology. The other question I ask these scientists is, where does wealth come from anyway? They tell me that wealth ultimately comes from science and technology. We physicists in the 1800s worked out the thermodynamics of heat. 80 years after that, we physicists worked out the laws of electricity and magnetism. 80 years after that, we physicists worked out the transistor and the laser, high technology, GPS systems, and the space program. What is the fourth wave of wealth generation? The fourth wave, we believe, will be science at the molecular level. Artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, and biotechnology, they will be the drivers of wealth generation into the future. Computer power will be everywhere and nowhere. We will no longer say the word computer. They will ask a computer for the latest information about surgery, about neurology, the heart, with an artificially intelligent computer system as they make the repairs. In the future, an artificially intelligent agent will tell me who owns these buildings, how much they cost, and make projections of the future. Now today, children use virtual reality. They put on goggles, they see a cartoon, and they create imaginary worlds. We have augmented reality. Scientists will be able to walk right inside a DNA molecule. This is augmented reality, where we take reality as it is, and then use artificial intelligence to tell us what reality could become. And who are the first people to buy internet contact lenses? College students taking final examinations. They will blink and see all the answers to my exam right there in their contact lens. No longer can we professors use memorization as the standard to learn science. The amino acids, boom, right there in your contact lens. Infinite information by blinking. Professors will have to emphasize concepts, principles, rather than memorizing things that you're going to forget the next day anyway. 3D printers are now so good that you can actually print merchandise. These shoes shown here, we can now begin to print with metals, which means that in the future you'll be able to design your own jewelry. You'll simply download the blueprint for the toy and print it out inside your living room. We're going to have a contradiction in terms called smart Barbie dolls. Today, you have a PC, a laptop, you have a tablet, and a cell phone. In the future, we will make intelligent paper, cyber paper. In the future, you talk to the wallpaper. You go to the wall and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Please change color. Please change design. Please change shape. Compliments of IBM and other computer companies. This is going to revolutionize medical care. Today, we can make MRI machines the size of a briefcase. That's the world's smallest MRI machine built in Germany. We can make an MRI machine this big. You are now looking at the future of medicine. Almost free medical advice. Scan your body with an object the size of a cell phone. So we're talking about a revolution in medicine. You will see people and you'll see their biography next to their image. And if they speak to you in a strange language, your contact lens will translate it into English.
These are cars of the future which have no steering wheel. Could you simply talk to them and they talk back to you? And one day, cars will become robots. You'll go over the best itinerary with your car. And when you want it to park it, you simply tell the car, park yourself. You don't have to own a car anymore. You can lease a car. Parking spaces will become obsolete. This is going to change the way we live once, once cars become robots. NASA wants to make a supersonic commercial jetliner. It took me 12 hours, 12 hours to fly from Manhattan to Dubai. NASA says by 2025, we want a new blueprint for a supersonic transport. Your cell phone has more computer power than all of NASA in 1969 when they put two men on the moon. We can design supersonic airflow to create jets that have no sonic boom. Is what killed the Concorde because we didn't have supercomputers. Today, we have supercomputers. We can model supersonic airflow to create jets starting next year. The United States will send a capsule around the moon for the first time in 50 years. We're going back to the moon next year. And then after that, on to Mars. That private companies like SpaceX can now create the biggest rocket on the planet Earth. The Falcon Heavy is the biggest rocket on the planet Earth today. We got it for free. That is how cheap space travel has become. We're building up to something that I call perfect capitalism. Capitalism is private ownership where prices are set by supply and demand. But capitalism is imperfect. Supply and demand are imperfect. You don't know who's cheating you. You don't know what the profit margin is. You don't know what other people think about a product. That's imperfect. Plus, you have all these middlemen. All these middlemen that don't do anything except transport goods from point A to point B. Perfect capitalism is where we are going today. For example, there are, of course, winners and losers in perfect capitalism. The winners are society. Things are cheaper, more diverse, better quality. But who are the losers? The biggest losers are the middlemen, like brokers. Now, today, stockbrokers no longer sell stock. Stockbroking is a middleman's job. You can buy stocks on your wristwatch because stockbrokers sell something that robots cannot provide. And what is that? Intellectual capital. We're talking about experience. We're talking about what robots do not have. That's where the jobs are gonna be for middlemen. So let's say you wanna become a billionaire. How do you do it? Not so difficult. First, you take a look at the marketplace and take an industry, any industry. Then you look to where there are middlemen, inefficiencies, friction, aggravation. And then what you do, you digitize it. Reduce the friction of capitalism, create perfect capitalism. A new world where people can take the initiative to create businesses. Governments can play a key role in this whole process. 200 years for capitalism to take root in Europe. Now, developing societies can do it in one generation. One thing they can do is to reduce regulations. Governments like to regulate. They don't produce anything. They like to regulate things because governments, what do governments do? They tax. But sometimes taxes can be such that it kills the goose that lays the golden age. You want to stimulate investment by reducing red tape. Now, the other day, I started a company in New York. How did I start my company? On my cell phone. This is what we need. Less red tape, more initiative, more ideas to keep this thing going. You need educated people. 
We have to make sure that we sponsor great universities, that we reward people for taking the initiative for creating something when nothing exists in the past. And the first thing that European scientists tell me is they want to leave. They want to leave Europe and come to America. Europe has great scientists. Europe has great laboratories. But the problem is cultural. In Europe, if you make a mistake, it follows you. If you make a mistake, it follows you in Europe, also in Asia. In America, we couldn't care less if you make a mistake. Mistakes is how you learn. And that's what we do in Silicon Valley. And now let's talk about the digitization of the next great area, biotechnology, huge. Baby boomers are aging. First of all, diagnostics. This is a computer. It's the size of an aspirin pill. It has a chip in it with a camera and a magnet. You swallow it and a magnet traces it as it goes inside your stomach, taking beautiful pictures of your large intestine. However, this gives new meaning for the expression Intel inside. We're talking about a new era, the digitization of diagnostics. Nanotechnology will fight blood cancer cells one by one. And how will we prevent cancer? We will unleash something called liquid biopsies and DNA chips. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm telling you today is, in the future, the word tumor will disappear from the English language. The aging process is the next process to be digitized. We cannot digitize many of the organs of the human body. This is an ear. It is your ear from your cells grown in the laboratory. We can now grow skin, bone, cartilage, blood vessels, heart valves, complete bladders can now be grown, and windpipes can also be grown. The next organ to be grown is the liver. So for all you alcoholics in the audience, take heart we will grow livers in the future. Artificial intelligence may give us something that the kings and queens of old could never conquer, and that is the aging process. We can analyze millions of genomes of old people, compare them to millions of genomes of young people, and identify where aging takes place in the body. We've already isolated 60 genes that are involved in the aging process. And where are they located? Where does aging take place in a car? The engine, why? That's where oxidation takes place. That's where you have moving parts. Where is the engine of a cell? The mitochondria. And that's where aging takes place in the main. And it's only a matter of time before we genetically modify those genes that are damaged. Some animals hardly die at all. The Greenland shark lives on the average of 400 years. And the next organ to be digitized is the brain. This is called the Connectome Project. The next century could give us the Connectome Project as we map the entire human brain. And we can now extract images from the living brain. This is how artists will work in the future think of something, it'll materialize in front of them, and then a 3D printer will print it out. This is going to revolutionize the world of art. We're talking about the Connectome Project. We can now give the gift of mobility to soldiers, people in car accidents, sports injuries, to give them the gift of life again. And the big announcement made two years ago is that we can now upload memories into the human brain. We are uploading memories, recording memories, and this is going to give us a new era in the internet. We will send memories on the internet. This is going to revolutionize entertainment. Who wants to see a silent movie anymore when you can see the talkies? You'll simply put the entire emotion at the end of every sentence. Your first date your first kiss, your first senior prom, your first dance, all those memories on the internet as we upload memories. 
At Berkeley, where I got my PhD so many years ago, we can now begin the process of photographing a dream. On the left is a brain scan of the brain with 30,000 dots digitized. We put these 30,000 pixels in a computer. The computer recognizes images and prints them out. Here you see the actor, Steve Martin, at the top. Below that, you see a picture of Steve Martin created by the living brain through 30,000 pixels of blood flow recorded by an MRI scan. So we can now extract images from the living brain. And then if you fall asleep in this MRI machine, the machine keeps on going and prints out a picture of your dream. We will digitize every single video, every single recording, all his life experiences, and you will talk to him. This is called digital immortality. In the future, you'll be able to talk to your ancestors, or for the most part, maybe your descendants. Your descendants, hundreds of years into the future, may want to talk to you because you have been digitized. We're talking about artificial intelligence being bigger than the automobile industry. Artificial intelligence is going to create jobs, industries, new opportunities, new fields opening up. Robots could become dangerous. The tipping point is self-awareness. Fortunately, robots do not know they are robots. So we have nothing to worry about. But in the future, Perhaps we should put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they have murderous thoughts once they become self-aware. The U.S. Pentagon sponsored the DARPA challenge to create a Fukushima robot that could clean up the mess at Fukushima, and almost every single robot failed. We are headed toward perfect capitalism. We're going to digitize all of society, and the brain is the next major organ to be digitized we're going to have BrainNet. Thank you very much. Great audience. Introduction to the future. Thank you.